in my previous video, I forgot to show you how to configure view resolver in the web.xml file. So I decided to record it again. It's from uh, scratch. I'm gonna create a project using Maven, but uh, I'm not gonna use archetype. If you want to see how to use archetype to create, you can see my, uh, my videos in the description. You can find the videos in the description, okay? Uh, next, and uh, I'm gonna give a group ID which is XNG region and artifact ID. I'm gonna use in Spring uh, MVC XML demo. And uh, you can change the location if you want. And I'm gonna use in this uh, window. Enable. First thing I'm gonna do is add a packaging here. And I'll change to using var. Next one is our app dependency, which is the Spring Web MVC. Okay. Spring Web. Spring Framework. Why then it comes out? It's so so weird. Okay, five point. Okay, and uh, we just uh, have this dependency add. If we have some problems, we are gonna come back. We might have problem when we compile for this uh, project. We'll come back and add more things. So the next one is um, um, since we have the we are using Maven to organize our web applications, we'll create a folder called uh, web app. This is a standard way to for Maven to organize your web application. Okay, uh, next one we're gonna create another directory called the web inf. And then inside here we're gonna create a file called the web.xml. And in the web.xml, you have to configure for your dispatch servlet, which is the only servlet in this project. Okay, I'm going to copy something to here. This is kind of like the startup or the namespace. I kind of remember, so I just copy from the backup. The first thing you can do is you can create a servlet mapping which I'm gonna call the name dispatcher servlet, okay? D-I-S-P-A-C-H-T-E-R, dispatcher servlet. And the URL pattern, I'm gonna use slash, which means all the requests is gonna go through for this servlet. And the servlet gonna have the same name as this one, okay? And then you also have another, which is servlet class, which means when all the requests comes to your application, which class should handle for this request? And it should go to your dispatch servlet. And here you have to use in springs. Okay. Springs web.servlet dot dispatch servlet. And this is how you configure for the dispatch servlet, the only servlet, the front controller in your application. Next one is we have to configure something for Spring to initialize all the pins for you and to make sure those annotations like uh, auto while and auto wild and uh, what others uh, request mapping, request prom, path variable available. So we have to give a Spring configuration file. And the key is called the context config location. And the value gonna be particular XML file. So we're gonna put it under the web inf and I'm gonna put it in the config, okay? Um, I'm gonna name this file called mvc.config.xml uh, file. So next step is I'm gonna create this folder on the web inf, okay? And then I'm gonna create a file called spring mvc. Okay, and now I have, I, have, I have to do the settings, right? 
so I'm gonna go somewhere to copy some startup code here okay and here you do your configuration we have to do two configuration for now I'm gonna change and do later okay and uh, the first one is ask spring to initialize those bins for you so you give a package here if you want to have multiple package you just separate the each package using comma okay and it will automatically scan for the sub packages so you can I'll, I'll give the uh, like a top package which is a parent package the another one is called the MVC annotation driven what does this one do this one is uh, after spring initialize all the beans for you but uh, for some beans they are special like uh, if you annotate the class as a controller which means you want to inside of this class you want to uh, have the methods which is a handle the request right so you might using the annotation like get mapping post mapping request mapping and other annotation like request prime path variables and this configuration is make sure those annotations are available and can be used okay so next one we are done our settings we can start coding our code to fulfill our logic okay or feature first one I'm gonna create a package under the Java called the controller and here I will create a controller class let's call welcome controller and here I'm gonna add controller annotation and I'm gonna create a method called the string and the welcome Here, I want to show you this one first. I will come, we will come back, change, okay? What does this one means? If the package starts and if it access this URL, it will forward to this JSP file, okay? So we create a folder or directory under the web inf called the JSP and we create a file called the welcome.jsp. JSP file name is welcome. Okay. And uh, I will change this one to be hello. And now I change this one to be h1. Okay. Welcome to my channel. Please. So everything is set up we let's run and see if we have errors we're gonna fix the errors and the deployment you artifact you can select each one of them this one is a compressed version this one is the compressed version and if you select the exploded version then it's gonna have a benefit if you run the application in the debug mode then it can automatically load the changes if you change the file it will automatically load for you and it goes back you can apply then you can ok and run so in this case you're facing this issue which means you are by default this IntelliJ gonna using uh, JTK5 to uh, build your application and uh, which is uh, not supported and uh, we have to add some configurations in our POM to make sure we are using 1.8 uh, which is supported one in my uh, computer so we will, I'm gonna add two one is the properties make sure when Maven build our file our application we're gonna use in 1.8 the other one we have to add is the plugin okay and this one oh, if I have time I will upload another um, video to explain what I are doing it just to help you to clean the package okay this one is to compile your application this one is to compile your WAR files okay to using the plugins so now let's run one more time
Uh, now the application started successfully. I'm gonna switch to the browser to show you uh, the actual behavior. Chrome. When I start up, and this is my URL, and the Spring MVC XML demo exploded, and uh, this is the URL we access, which is the root, right? When I click enter, you will see our welcome.jsp file. So the application now works, but we still have something we might want to change, okay? Let me switch back to the IntelliJ. The change part is this. Suppose we have uh, multiple file, multiple methods here. For every method, you have to write this piece of code, right? You have to add a slash webinf slash gsp and dot gsp on every method. This is not good. Another thing is, if later you want to so using another template, instead of using gsp, you want to using free marker, you want to using a uh, time leaf. Then you have to come back to the controller to change every return. This is not good. So to solve the problem in the configuration file, you can actually configure a bin, and uh, which is for the view resolver. Okay, we give id equals view resolver, and we give a class which is a springs or spring framework dot web servlet dot uh, internal resource oh, I couldn't remember view dot internal resource view resolver okay and then here you can configure property name is a prefix okay and you give a value which is where uh, which is what I think uh, slash web inf gsp What's a prefix? Prefix here is this part, okay? And we also configure for this part. And we have a, another property, name is a suffix. And the value is called dot, dot .gsp. And after we do this one, after we do this configuration for the view resolver, we can go back to our controller. You no longer need to write a code like this. What you can do is you just return the GSP file's name. So instead of writing the prefix and the suffix, you just return the GSP file's name. So now let me stop the application and uh, run one more time. We need to wait a little bit because it's going to take time to build the application and uh, deploy. Okay, now the application already start. We I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to the browser to show you. Okay, first I'm gonna go to our page to copy the URL to access our application, and now I'm gonna switch to Chrome. And uh, now this is our Chrome. I'm gonna copy our URL here, then hit the enter. So everything works. Okay, that's the benefit of config view resolver. So uh, thank you for the video and uh, see you in my next video.